Hi everyone, today I want to show you how to knit this super soft and squishy fisherman's rib baby blanket. I can't express how soft these fisherman's ribs make this blanket. It has to be one of the squishiest blankets that I've ever knitted. And it has the added bonus that not only is this main section a super easy two row repeat, but it has this cute little garter stitch border all built in so you don't have to do any edging when you're done. To make a blanket the same as mine, you are going to need approximately 300 grams of double knit yarn. I used Hayfield Bonus Double Knit in the shade Lagoon Blue, which is my absolute favourite acrylic yarn to knit with. It just has this nice sturdiness, but is also incredibly soft once it's worked up. Then you are also going to need some circular knitting needles, 4mm if you're also using double knit yarn. And you are going to want those knitting needles to be about 80 to 100 centimetres long. And if you're making a bigger blanket, you want to make sure that you pick a cable long enough to accommodate the amount of stitches that you're going to work. So without further ado, grab your needles, grab some yarn and let's get knitting. If you want to replicate the blanket that I showed you a few minutes ago, you are going to need to cast on a total of 115 stitches. But you can easily adapt your pattern to be any size that you want. You just need to cast on an odd number of stitches plus 12 stitches for your edging. So any odd number of stitches plus 12. For this tutorial, I'm just going to make a small sample. So I'm going to cast on 45 stitches. You can use whichever cast on method you like. I'm going to use the long tail cast on method today. Once you've cast on your stitches, you want to turn your work. I like this smooth edge of the cast on to be my right side, but if you prefer the opposite edge, that's fine too. I just like the look that this gives. So it's the side that faces you as you're casting on. That's the side I like to be my right side. So first of all, we need to work the bottom garter stitch edging. And to the work that, it's really easy. You just want to knit 13 rows. So if you go ahead and knit your 13 rows of garter stitch, and that's just knitting every single stitch in the row for 13 rows, I will meet you back after we've worked that edging and show you what we need to do next. Once you've knitted 13 rows, you want to turn your work and have the right side of your work facing you. And you should ideally have, ignoring this um, smooth edge here, seven garter bumps facing you. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we only want our edge to actually be six garter bumps deep because we have six stitches on each side to form the edging but when you work the first row of this blanket it actually eats up this row of knit stitches so if we didn't add one more row than we need then you'd only end up with five here instead of the six that we want the main body of this blanket is a two row repeat. So you repeat the same two rows over and over until your blanket is as long as you want it to be. So row one of that two row repeat is as follows. You want to knit the first six stitches. If you want to, you can pop a stitch mark here to remind you where your edge stitches end and where the main body of your blanket starts. But if you're comfortable counting, then you don't necessarily need to use those. The middle part of the section is as follows. You want to purl one. And then knit one below and a knit one below means instead of picking up this loop like you normally would if you were knitting you're going into the row below so you're picking up two loops instead of one and then you purl one knit one below and you want to alternate those until you have seven stitches left When you have seven stitches left on your left hand needle, you should have just ended with a knit one below. Then what you want to do is purl one 
and knit the last six stitches because those form our garter stitch edging. And you can see here where we have worked those knit one belows, that's what creates the ridges that you saw in the intro. And you can also see now we only have six rows of garter stitch because where we've knitted one below across this first row, it has eaten up that, that last row of garter bumps that we had when we started. And that's why we work one more row than we actually need to have visible on the border once it's done. Row two of our two row repeats is extremely similar. You want to knit the first six stitches. Then instead of purling, we want to knit one below this time. So again, instead of picking up this leg, you want to go into the row below. So you've got two loops that you're picking up and just knit as normal. Then you want to purl one, knit one below, purl one, knit one below and alternate these two again until you have seven stitches left. When you have seven stitches left, the last stitch you should have just worked should have been a purl one. And then you're going to finish off the main body section with a knit one below. And then we're going to knit the last six stitches. And it's these two rows that we alternate until our blanket is as long as we want it to be minus about four centimeters for the edge. So just to recap them again, row one of the two row repeat is knit six. Then for the main middle section, you want to purl one, knit one below, purl one, knit one below, all the way along until you have seven stitches left on your row. When you have seven stitches left, the last stitch you've just worked should have been a knit one below. And then you want to purl one and then knit the last six stitches. Row two of the repeat, just one more time, is knit six. Then we're going to alternate knit one below, purl one, knit one below and purl one, all the way across until we have seven stitches left. When you have seven stitches left on your left hand needle, you should have just worked a purl one here and then your final stitch of that main section will be a knit one below and then knit the last six stitches. And you can already see your ribbing is starting to appear. And although I've talked about a right side and a wrong side to this project, there is minimal difference between the two. I just picked this side as the right side because I like the fact the pearls give a little bit of distance between the edging and the first um, column of ribbing. But it's really up to you. It is a reversible blanket. I'm going to go away and make this sample a bit bigger and then I'll show you how we work the top edging and finish off the blanket. When you've worked your piece to about four centimetres shorter than what you want your overall blanket to be, you're ready to start working the edge for the top edge. You want to start your edging when the wrong side of your work is facing you. So in the case of this blanket, that will mean that your tail from your cast on is at the same end as you are going to be knitting. And it's really as simple as the beginning of your blanket. You want to just start knitting. And instead of working any purl stitches and knit one belows, you just want to knit every stitch. And you want to knit a total of 11 rows. And I'll show you why that is when we work our cast off. I've now worked 11 rows and I have the right side of my work facing me. And you can see that just like below, I have six 
garter stitch ridges and the reason I want to cast off with the right side facing me is it will give this same smooth edge that I have on my cast on row so the top and the bottom match. So now for our final row we are going to cast off knitwise. So you just want to knit the first two stitches quite loosely and then lift one loop over the second loop and you should be left with one loop on your right hand needle. Then you want to knit one, lift a loop over and drop it off the needles. At no point should you have more than two loops on your right hand needle. So you want to work all the way along, knitting one and then lifting the previous stitch over the one you've just knitted. So knit one, lift it over and off your needles. And you want to work that all the way along until your final stitch. Once you're left with just one loop, that's the point that you can cut your yarn. You want to leave a long enough tail to sew in your end. And then you just want to use your knitting needle to pull that loop through and that stitch is now nice and secure. And then you're left with your finished piece with matching top and bottom edge. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, I'd love it if you'd give it a thumbs up and let me know if you make one in the comments below. And I'll be back for another tutorial soon. Bye!